This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. President Vladimir Putin has raised the stakes in an economic war with the West and its allies with a decree that seizes full control of the Sakhalin 2 gas and oil project in Russia's Far East, a move that could force out Shell and Japanese investors. The order, signed on Thursday, creates a new firm to take over all rights and obligations of Sakhalin Energy Investment County, in which Shell and two Japanese trading companies Mitsui and Mitsubishi hold just under 50%. The five-page decree, which follows Western sanctions imposed on Moscow over its invasion of Ukraine, indicates the Kremlin will now decide whether the foreign partners can stay. President Joe Biden's administration on Friday unveiled a five-year proposal for offshore oil and gas development in areas of existing production, and said the final plan may have anywhere from zero to 11 lease sales. The range of options, between two auctions a year and none at all, sought to balance the administration's efforts to fight climate change with its calls to increase oil and gas supplies in the face of soaring fuel prices. The proposed plan includes no more than 10 possible sales in the Gulf of Mexico and one in the Cook Inlet off the coast of Alaska, the Interior Department said, adding that areas of development could be winnowed further after public comment. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. Oil prices gained more than 2% on Friday as supply outages in Libya and expected shutdowns in Norway outweighed expectations that an economic slowdown could dent demand. Brent crude futures settled at $111.63 a barrel, rising $2.60, or 2.4%. West Texas Intermediate Crude, WTI, settled at $108.43 a barrel, gaining $2.67, or 2.5%. WTI and Brent traded at about 70% and 77%, respectively, of the previous session's volumes ahead of the US 4th of July holiday. For the week, Brent lost 1.3%, while WTI rose 0.8%. For June, both benchmarks had ended the month lower for the first time since November. OPEC in June did not deliver on an oil output increase pledged under a deal with allies, a Reuters survey on Friday showed, as involuntary declines in Libya and Nigeria offset supply increases by Saudi Arabia and other large producers. The Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, pumped 28.52 million barrels per day, BPD, in June. The survey found, down 100,000 barrels of oil per day from May's revised total. OPEC had planned to boost June output by about 275,000 barrels of oil per day. OPEC plus Russia and other allies, known as OPEC plus, are unwinding 2020 output cuts made due to the pandemic, although many are struggling to do so. OPEC plus at a meeting on Thursday stuck to its planned output hike for August. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. India has raised its basic import duty on gold to 12.5% from 7.5%, the government said on Friday, as the world's second biggest consumer of the precious metal tries to dampen demand and bring down the trade deficit. Local gold prices jumped to an over two-month peak of 52,032 rupees per 10 grams on Friday, the highest since April 25. India meets most of its gold demand through imports. That has put pressure on the rupee, which hit a record low earlier on Friday. California on Thursday approved a plan to tax the electric vehicle battery metal lithium to generate revenue for environmental remediation projects despite industry concerns that it will harm the sector and delay shipments to automakers. Governor Gavin Newsom, a Democrat, approved the tax as part of a must-pass state budget on Thursday. The state legislature had signed off on the levy during deliberations on Wednesday night. The tax is structured as a flat rate per tonne and will go into effect in January. The tax will be reviewed every year, and state officials have agreed to study potentially switching to a percentage-based tax. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. Sanctions hit Russia has reduced its grain exports taxes sharply after changing the formula it uses for calculating them to support shipments in the July-June to June marketing season, the Agriculture Ministry said on Friday. 
Russian farmers are expected to harvest a massive wheat crop this summer, bringing a record exportable surplus in the 2022-23 season. However, shipments are complicated by high export tax, a strong ruble and sanctions inflated costs for freight and insurance. The new base price for calculating the wheat export tax is set at 15,000 rubles, $283.68 at the current rate, per tonne, the ministry said. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.